Hi everyone, Marisa Stone here with Simon Says Social in the Systems Lounge, and I want to welcome you today to the 2018 Premier International Women's Business Systems Virtual Summit, where you get to learn all about the systems that our speakers are using to get things done. And I am super stoked to have Jody Brandon here today. She is going to talk with us all about authorship as the building block for growth. So let me tell you a little bit about Jody. Jody has more than 20 years of experience in book publishing. Now that's huge, guys. Um, after many years of working in traditional publishing, her passion these days is really working as a book writing and publishing coach for creative entrepreneurs and bloggers and solopreneurs who really need book editing services, coaching services, maybe someone to just hold their hand <laughs> as they go through this process so that they can up-level their business with the publication of a book. So Jody, welcome to the summit. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yay! So let's just begin at the beginning. What are we talking about when we say authorship? Well, I mean, it can mean a bunch of different things, obviously. When I talk about authorship, I'm talking about, you know, it doesn't have to be a traditional print book, although often it is, but it's more, if it's an ebook, it's more than, you know, like a freebie sized ebook. Right. Um, you know what I mean? It's got a little bit of heft to it. Yes. And you're using it to share your expertise. So it's not, you know, like a freebie to get someone onto your email list. It's much bigger than that. Okay. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused, right? Is, you know, because I can say that I have a best selling book on Amazon that's a little 50 page how to manual, but that's not exactly what we're talking about here. Usually a, a little bit more than that. Yeah. Usually like a minimum 100 pages, although 50 pages is nothing to scoff at. Well, that's true. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the words Amazon bestseller. I mean, that's are, true. Too. Yeah. Those are good too. <laughs> That's true too. That's true yeah. too. So I think a lot of people just though when they think ebook, they they're thinking of that you know like eight to twelve page thing that they're giving as an opt in, right. um, and we're looking at you know something that's going to take you a little longer than that. Yeah, a little bigger <laughs> yeah. than that. <laughs> yeah. But the rewards are also bigger and better. Right, so. right, right. So why is this something entrepreneurs should consider? Like, why should I consider writing a book? And oh my gosh, what an undertaking. <laughs> well, it, it can be an undertaking, but I always tell my clients, you have a bigger content bank than you realize. So there's a lot of repurposing that's going on, which I know we're going to talk about. Yes. Um, but I think it's just, it's just a great way to set yourself apart from your competitors. It's a great way to grow your platform, you know, start your platform, enhance your platform, all of those, you know, buzzwords that we hear all the time as entrepreneurs that we should be doing. Um, and just, you know, it, I know you're also, we're also going to talk about media, I know. And that's one of the, I mean, it's the, it's one of the best ways, you know, I mean, journalists don't care that you have a course on whatever, um, right. but the, if you have a book on whatever their topic is, that they can hold up and show. I mean, that makes them look good too. So, right. Yeah, it's um, a prop. <laughs> absolutely. It's a great prop. Um, right. So yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just a great way to show authority, you know, build, build your base and all of those things that we're trying to do with our hustle every single day. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So what types of entrepreneurs should consider writing a book? Like, is this for anybody? Um, it's for, it's for most anybody, honestly. And you, because you can do so many different things with it is why it works for just about anybody. Um, if you want to have a speaking career, a book is, I mean, almost a must have. Yeah. I mean, it's a no brainer for people who are doing public speaking at yeah. conferences, at seminars, you know, at in-person, whatever, anywhere they're going to let you sell a book at the back of the room, you are a fool not to have a book to sell at the back of the room. Right, right. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, I mean, anybody who wants to, you know, share their expertise, build awareness, show their, showcase their authority, increase their own credibility. Yeah. I mean, depending on what you want to do with that book, just about anybody can benefit with a book. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So one of the things that you tell your clients is being able to say or write author of can truly benefit your business in a number of different ways. Can we talk about, and I know we've alluded to some of those, but what are some of the other ways in which authorship can benefit us? 
I think just, I mean, your eyes lit up a little tiny bit when you said author of, I mean, because we all do it. If we, if we know someone is an author of a book, we think, oh, wow, she must really know what she's talking about. Yeah, she's put in the work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that that's it, just that in itself, those two words just open up the door to, you know, more people being interested in what you want to say, more people thinking what you say is credible, more people, you know, it helps with the no like trust factor, all of the different things you can do with the book. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we're not the only two people whose eyes light up when we see those words author of or hear those words author right. of. <laughs> so I think, I mean, it really is just, I think because tr um, tr traditional publishing through a publishing house, which is the way it always used to be done for everybody, it was such a big deal. That yeah. So like, it was like this exclusive club. Yeah. And now that their self-publishing is such a big thing. And most of my clients these days are self-publishers, self, self-publishing by choice, really not right. because, oh, I couldn't get a traditional book deal. So I'm going to self-publish right. by choice for, I mean, I'm sure you're going to ask me about all the reasons oh, why yeah. and I'm happy to share that. <laughs> um, so it's really, but we still have that little tiny thing in the back of our mind where it's like, oh, she wrote a book. That's awesome. And yeah. She really, you know, be an expert in her topic. So. And I think even the self-publishing process, you still have to put in the work on the front end. So oh. either way, you've still done all the research into your topic. You've still organized that research into chapters. You've still gone through the whole process of really putting into each of those chapters the important pieces that your audience needs to know. I mean, this is a, this is a great deal of work. It's, it, yes. It's, I mean, it's not, you know, an easy breezy, oh, I'm going to write a book. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, you've got a, a book out there. <laughs> There's a little more than that. Just a little. But, yeah. Much. <laughs> about, no, that much. About. Um, but yeah, I mean, self-publishing has come such a long way. It used to be like, I have a, I have a, one of my most popular blog posts ever is called um, the publishing, uh, self-publishing ugly stepsister no more about how it used to be like this dirty word in the publishing industry. And now it's really not. Um, yeah. And it's because so many people, entrepreneurs especially are choosing to self-publish yeah. because, you know, I mean, we're entrepreneurs. We're the boss. We want to be in charge. That's right. So Self-publish, you're in charge. You're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. You guys, I mean, <laughs> you want to be in charge? Self-publish. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you maintain all of the control when you self-publish, which as we entrepreneurs know. Yeah, is, that's important. We like, we like to be in control. We like to be in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a big piece. Okay. Yeah. So I've heard that authoring a book is really more like the new business card. Yeah. What's on that? I totally, totally agree. I mean, it's like we were talking about, about media stuff. It's a prop. Yeah. It's, you know, you don't have to just give your little elevator pitch and then move on to someone else. You have actually something you can show people, yeah. you know, and they can look up your cover on Amazon and there's an actual book that they can hold in their hands. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I mean, it's the best way to, you know, you don't have to give you know, I don't have to tell somebody, oh, well, I, I worked in book publishing for 20 years and now I work with self-publishing authors. I actually wrote a book on it. Right. I'll write, publish, market, all right. about self-publishing. You know what I mean? So I don't have to go through my whole bio. I could just say, I actually literally wrote the book. Right. Um, and yeah, and people, you know, again, are probably sometimes more impressed than they should be like that, but I'll take it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's an important piece, right? Because you know, what happens to business cards? You know, they typically, you take them home from an event or a conference or a networking, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and they sit in a pile on your desk. You know? yep. Until you toss them. <laughs> and, until you toss them. And you may or may not add them to your email list and you may or may not add them to your contacts. And I mean, like, you know, it's not unheard of for me to, you know, tell the kids, hey, take pictures of these and get them all in my cam card because I yep. simply don't have time to deal with it. Yep. Whereas a book, that's going to, that's going to be something that in the evening when I'm done with my work day, I'm going to pull out that book and I'm going to go through it, especially if it's a book that, you know, is, is in my target or my, my yep. niche. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to want to know what that person said and what their expertise is inside that book. So I can totally see how that yeah. takes you up a yeah. significant level. Yeah. I mean, it's just so much easier to remember who that person is and what they're about yeah. with a book versus just, you know, the little card that, yeah. that we all keep buying and passing out when we go to events. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, I promise I'll stop. <laughs> I know. I keep waiting, but it hasn't yet. <laughs> I know. It hasn't happened yet. 
So let's talk about, I know we talked for a moment ago about credibility and how, how authoring a book really mm-hmm. does impact your credibility. Mm-hmm. How does this set you apart from your peers? Like what is, what's really going on here? Well, I mean, we know how important no like, and trust is. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's so huge. And you've, the, the trust part is easier with a book because you're showcasing your credibility yeah. like on every page of that book. And I'm t- working a lot now with author entrepreneurs to couple their book with video in some way, whether it's a video on their sales page or a book trail or something like that, because it's just, just like that. You've got, you know, the know and like quicker than you can any other way. Yeah. So you couple the book with, some kind of video or Facebook live, whatever's getting in front of people, letting them get to know you. Yeah. And it just really, um, once they have the no like trust, it just, you know, it's referrals. It's, you know, it's like, it's like the cycle. I tell people yeah. you've got your credibility and it leads to the platform and then the platform gets bigger and then people want to talk to you and then there's more word of mouth and then there's more clients. And then yeah. it's just, it's, it's a good, I used to describe it as, you know, an avalanche, like a snowball coming down the mountain, but I feel like, I feel like that one's not so positive. <laughs> now I call it just a flame. Um, but it's the same idea. It gets bigger and bigger and better. And, um, yeah. but it all starts with no like trust. Yeah. So and I can totally see how a book gives you that because I mean, you do put in a lot of work and a lot of time and energy into the book. And, you know, I mean, you know, when I sit down and read some of the books from the people that I follow, it's like, oh my gosh, look at what they've done. So it, you know, you get to know them. You mentioned this earlier, you get to know them on a whole new level. Yeah. When you see what they're writing and you see how they put all this together. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just, you can, a good writer, you can read their personality through the pages of the book. Yeah. And that's, I mean, another reason that I encourage the video on top of that, because then you can see, Oh, that's really her. Yeah, yeah. That's really her personality. She yes. really knows what she's talking about. She's a fight. You know, you feel like most of my clients, I encourage to write in like a, ca- a like a casual conversational tone. Yeah. I'm not talking about stuffy academic books with 800 end notes and right. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, I want to talk like we're talking right now. Like I'm talking with my girlfriend about business yeah. and she's just teaching me about her area of expertise. Right. Right. So, So you mentioned a moment ago that writing a book is kind of this snowball effect or this Mm -hmm. cyclical effect. How does writing a book impact your sales? Not necessarily book sales, right? Because ideally you're writing the book to put it, but how does it impact your overall sales inside your business? Well, if you're writing a book in your niche, it's going to impact your sales in a great way. And that's probably not going to happen, you know, the first month after your book comes out. I tell people all the time, book publishing is a long game. Yeah. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Right. But if it does all of those things in that cycle, you know, the media, the media appearances, the media opportunities, the, you know, more and more interviews, more and more word of mouth, all of those things, all of those things come back to clients eventually. Yeah. Um, I mean, my own book, I'll use, I'll just use it as, as an example because it is in my niche. I mean, I started as just a copy editor and I was getting more and more of the same questions about how do I self-publish? I want to self-publish that I was working with a business coach and she says, you know, you need to be offering consulting services. You can't yeah. the same questions over and over, <laughs> over and over. And over. And over. <laughs> that means it's like a package or something. And I wasn't sure how to package it. And I thought, well, I know what to do. I can, I can write. And so I wrote a book about it and then it started getting into the right hands and I ended up getting a ton of book coaching clients that way, because even though they read what they want, were supposed to do, they want, you know, more handholding than that, right. which is great. Um, great. Yeah. So the book is serving who it's supposed to serve and it's leading other people to me who need more than that. So, yeah. so that's how it works. I mean, it's slower sometimes than you'd like it to be just because it takes a while to gain traction just because there's yeah. so many books published. I mean, there's millions yeah. of bo- books published every single week in the United States yeah. or one around the world. So, I mean, it's a crowded market. So you have, you do have to do some work on the, the back end there mm-hmm. to get yourself in a position where your book is being marketed the right way. So it's, you know, getting into those right hands. Right. And once it gets into those right hands, it all sort of comes for a full yeah. circle. Yeah. yeah. 
which makes it really nice. Yeah. So let's talk about, I know we talked for a moment about the no like and trust factor, mm -hmm. but let's talk a little bit about authenticity and how that builds into this authentic space that you want to remain in so that you can reach out to your target market and you can, um, you know, build that no like and trust. Mm -hmm. How does writing a book put me on that fast track to really accomplishing that goal? Because it helps people get to know you. And if you're being authentic, it's, I mean, the book is just one piece of your visibility, you know, right. platform basically, or your visit right. visibility plan. So as long as you're being authentic in that book, people are going, that's going to complement what people already know about you. Or if they read your book first, anything else they find on social media, on, you know, your books, your book trailer, um, you know, your blog, anywhere else, all of those things complement each other. They're all different pieces of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. So if one of those, you know, that I don't know if you have little children, but I have younger nieces and nephews and they sing that song. One of these things is not like the other. You don't <laughs> want that with your book. You want one of, you want all of these things to be. So I start recognizing, Oh yeah, she says that in her blog and she expands on it in her book. It all works together. Right. And if you're not being authentic, people, man, people can tell in a hot minute. <laughs> Oh yeah. You so know? what about the person that decides to use a ghost writer? Um, how do they maintain authenticity? Because clearly that person's voice is not my voice. Right. If you're working with a good ghost writer, they're going to do a lot of work on in the prep end to okay. get your voice. Yeah. Um, ghost writing is a very unique talent. Yeah. Um, and the people who do it well are compensated for it for a reason. Yeah. Um, but I think, I mean, you can tell sometimes. Yeah. The book is, you know, no. ghost written and not authentic. Um, mm. But I mean, don't let, I, I try people not to get discouraged by that if they feel like they're not a writer. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that that's, um, that's, a, that's a mental roadblock for a lot of uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs who want to write a book. Right. I, mean, I hear every single day, but I'm not a writer. Um, and I, that's where we start with the repurposing conversation, because I bet you're more of a writer than you, th if you're an entrepreneur, you're you more of a writer than you think you are. <laughs> yeah. so. You actually make a good point with that, because I'm always telling my clients, you have more content than you think you do. Mm -hmm. so we're Absolutely. really having the same conversations. Yeah. Like, just, you know, yeah. go talk to Jody, go talk to Marie. <laughs> For, I mean, a lot of people are daunted by the, um, the number of words in a book, they're like, oh, I could never write a book. It's just, it's so many words. And I say, take a look at what you already have. And I bet you already have tens of thousands of words that, that you're going to need to do a little bit of work with them. You're not just going to smack those together and call it a book, but I bet people have more than they think they do. Yeah, they totally do. That, that totally makes sense to me. So I know we're going to be diving much, much deeper into this conversation in just a little bit, but is there anything else we need to know right now about authorship as our building block for growth? I think the biggest things are one, don't, don't be discouraged if you don't think you're a writer. Yeah. Two, choose your path to publication and go with it, whether it's traditional or self-publishing. And if you're going to self-publish, my, my biggest piece of advice, honestly, my biggest piece of advice is, do not skip proofreading. It sounds so simple, yeah. but a lot of people try and DIY a lot of the process and that's great. I say make a budget, spend where you can spend, yeah. but do not skip professional proofreading because people can tell and that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no good because that, you know, it, it doesn't reflect well on you or your, you know, professionalism or your business or your platform or any of that. Right. So, you know, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. And I've done a lot of academic writing in my life and your brain will fill holes where they do not need to be full. Yep. So, you know, reading things out loud to yourself is not enough. <laughs> yeah. It's good, but it's, it no, is it's good, not enough. But it's yeah. not yeah. enough. <laughs> it's what it thinks you wrote or yes. what you meant. Um, yes. it's not always what you wrote. What you actually wrote. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah but I mean, and it's such a, a simple piece of advice, but I mean, I know it saves a lot of people some frustration. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Totally makes sense. So, wow. This has been absolutely fantastic, <laughs> Jody. I really, really appreciate all you've shared here. How can people reach out to you? Let's say they want to pick your brain a little bit more about this authorship thing or access some of your resources or perhaps work with you. How can they reach out to you? 
I have a ton of information on my website, which is uh, www.jodybrandoneditorial.com. And I understand you've got all my social buttons below so they can just link on those and you can find me. And uh, yeah, I would love to chat. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, definitely take advantage of some of those resources that Jody is sharing with you today and figure out whether or not this authorship is one of those systems that you want to add to your system of growth and development. If you are part of that all access pass, stick around because we're going to be diving so much deeper in just a few minutes with Jody into this whole process of authorship. If you have not yet grabbed your all access pass, there is a button below this video that allows you to go and snag that right now. And the reason that you want to do that is because not only are you getting all of these live videos that you are accessing right now, but you also get every single one of those deeper dives that I do with every one of our speakers. You do not want to miss that one. So go snag that right now. Jody, thank you so much for being here. And guys, we will see you in the All Access Pass. Bye, everyone.